DQD Theater presents Great Moments in Religion Paul's Letter to the Ephesians Dear Ephesians, how you doing? Long time, no right. Having a holy time, wish you were here. Tee <laughs> Heard the one about the Roman, the Jew, and the Assyrian who go into a bar? They... Uh, hmm. I think the tone's a little too light. I mean, it's not like this is a letter to the Corinthians. The Corinthians. Now there's a bunch of fun guys. Ephesians. What the heck kind of a name is that anyway? Oops. Okay. Let's serious it up here. To the saints who are also faithful in Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa, aren't we Mr. Serious? And talk about kissing up. Anyway, how come I have to write all the letters to all these cities? What, like the other apostles don't have hands? And I sure as hell better get reimbursed for all this postage! Maybe I can slough some of these letters off onto Matthew. I'll tell him they're epistles. Yeah, that'll impress the boob. <laughs> okay, now where was I? Gee, that pimple on my butt is killing me. Mm. For the next 30 minutes, we are in control of your television set. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We can make the picture brighter. We can blur the focus or bring the picture to crystal clarity. We can program your VCR. Well, well, kind of. Well, we're not really sure about that multiple event, multiple day thing. Anyway, we can make you like oat bran. We can run in the house with scissors. We can go swimming without waiting an hour after eating. Don't you try this, however. Clearly, we can do all kinds of cool stuff, like taking you on an adventure. An adventure from the inner mind to DQD Comedy Theater. Hello and welcome to the Politically Correct News, where we keep you well informed of the right things to say. Our top story tonight, Burger King has come under pressure to change its name because it sounds too sexist. Top execs have decided to change the name to Burger Ruler. <laughs> However, activist groups maintain that the name was still too autocratic in light of the recent democratization of much of the world. In a compromise, the name was to be changed to Burger Prime Minister. <laughs> However, this sounded too foreign and it didn't fit in the bun. Today, our sources report that in a brilliant move, execs have decided to change the name to Martin Luther Burger King. <laughs> Remember, folks, she's not ugly. She's aesthetically challenged. As we all know, the term pet has been replaced with the more politically correct animal companion. In response to this, Pope John Paul II made a statement this week that until a couple is engaged, heavy animal companioning is not acceptable. Remember, he's not fugly, just aesthetically challenged. And now, quick business update. Black and Decker is now African American and Decker. <laughs> Spick and Span is now Hispanic and Span. <laughs> and the Whopper is now the Italian Americaner. <laughs> he wasn't senile, folks, just reality impaired. <laughs> In an attempt to broaden the appeal of Rice Krispies, whose characters have been called a Eurocentric collection of oppressive white males, <laughs> Kellogg's executives have decided to diversify their product's characters. Starting next month, Snap, Letitia, and Jesus will <laughs> grace the packages of Rice Krispies. Crackle and Pop, seen here with lawyer Ellen Dershowitz, <laughs> have filed a reverse discrimination suit against Kellogg's. The Marlboro Man, a maverick in the world of advertising trademarks, has recently come under fire for being too macho, too patriarchal, and not nearly sensitive enough for the 90s. <laughs> Today, R.J. Reynolds officials announced that the Marlboro Man will be replaced with the Marlboro Folks, a lovable, whimsical, chain-smoking family consisting of <laughs> Papa, Mama, Baby Ned, and Popo the Nicotine Pig. 
In response to critics' complaints that the Marlboro folks will attract children to smoking, spokesperson Harold Marcus replied, you get rid of that damn camel, and we'll get rid of those lovable Marlboro folks. Joe Camel could not be reached for comment. <laughs> He's not desperate, just romantically challenged. Well, that's the PC News for tonight. Good night, and may all your days be unoffensive. The colder a beer is brewed, the better it tastes which is why there are so many ice beers around. You can drink any ice beer, or you can drink the coldest ice beer. My ex-girlfriend ice beer. It takes at least two years of emotionally arctic conditions to make this beer one bitchin' brew. Because nothing is as cold as my ex-girlfriend! Uh, Mrs. Jones, uh, please send in my next appointment. Um, yes, ha hello. It's it's very good to 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 meet you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bloody Axe. My name is that Bloody Axe. That's yeah. Blood Axe. Eric Blood Axe. Scourge of the Mongols, the spoiler of the Saxons, the destroyer of the Huns! Eric Bloodaxe, he who maketh the Persians flee in terror. He who makes the Turks wet their pants at the very mention of his name. He whom all the women of the Visigoths, when they hope, to taste of his manliness. Uh. How nice. But let's just take a, a a seat and have a look at your resume, shall we? Yes, let's just let's just do that. Um, I, I see here that it that it says that you have have slaughtered many thousands of Danes, ah. and um that the Gauls curse your name across the uh, length and uh, breadth of their accursed land. Ah. Um, all very very impressive, to be sure, Mister Mister Bloodax. However, I, I brought just... a sample of my I... work. Mm. Oh, a severed human head. Hmm, and, and a very fine example of its kind. I, I must say, Mr. Mr. Bloodaxe, however, oh, I, I, I do say that that is a very, very interesting piece of jewelry that you're wearing. That that is a, a, a human hand, is it not? Yes, it does a gift from my wife, Freya. Freya Bloodaxe, warrior. Huntress, she-demon, lover. She's really a whiz when it comes to accessorizing. To be sure. Um, but as I was saying, Mr. Mr. Bloodax, impressive as your credentials may, may be, um, and, and I must be very upfront in saying that, that, that no applicant to this company has, has ever slaughtered just quite so many Danes as you have, or, yeah. or, or despoiled quite, quite the thousands that, that you have, uh, Mr. Bloody Axe. Yeah. Um, however, uh, you are aware, are you not, that, that the position for which you're applying is, is that of uh, accountant trainee? The Normans are about to hear my name as they tremble in fear. The Lombards! Are you trying to tell me that I'm overqualified for this position? It's what I'm hearing everywhere I go. Mr. Thompson, please. I'm willing to start at the bottom. Uh, accounting is all I've ever really wanted to do uh, ever since I was 10 years old, and I disemboweled my first enemy. As rewarding an experience as that was, I knew that destiny had something greater in store for me. A county. Please, Mr. Thompson, please, all I ask is a chance. A chance to live my dream. M Mr. Bloodax, much as I can understand your, your passion for numbers, I, I, I still have to say that with your... Uh, I don't ah! feel that... Uh, Mr. Thompson, may I show you something? Uh, well, I, AI. I, I suppose so. Ever since I began pillaging and plundering, I've kept a statistical account of all my activities. This is a chart which shows my pillaging to plundering ratio. And this is a graph that shows my total disemboweling throughout the years. 
This line shows the ratio of my disembowelings to my total killings. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the downward trend shows that I'm not just married to one way of doing things. I like to think of myself as a multifaceted individual, Mr. Thompson. One who is open to new ideas. I, I might be making a, a big mistake here, but... Ah. Damn it, Blood Axe. I'm gonna hire you. In fact, you remind me a lot of myself when, when I was just starting out. But let me warn you, Blood Axe. If you thought that the Bongos and the Saxons were tough, just wait until tax time here at Rawlings Evergreen and Franklin. Why, we're gonna work you so hard, in fact, I'm going to put you under our toughest man. Mrs. Jones, please send in Mr. Cohen. Why, he'll find out PDQ if you have what it takes to become an accountant. Genghis, this is your new trainee. Godzilla is very angry. Somehow we must tell Godzilla that DQD Comedy Theater will be right back. Oh my, yes! He protects all living things in the forest. But he can't do it alone. Please don't play with matches. Put out your campfires. And never, ever forget the words of Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. I'm Dr. Henry Heimlich with a reminder. Never slap a choking person on the back. It drives the object deeper into the throat. Learn the Heimlich maneuver. Write the Heimlich Institute, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45208. Star date 362438. We've just spent three days shore leave on Spacey Name 4, and we're setting out for the Vital Space Conference at Cool Sound 2 next month. We've got some very vital information on board, which should play a very important role in our negotiations with the Hoosits. But for now, we'll wander the galaxy for a couple of much needed break like time unit watch McCollets. The much needed rest is wonderful, and I must say, I haven't felt this good since. since. Well, since that little brat Wesley Crusher went off the Starfleet Academy. Acted like I didn't know how to run my own ship, the impotent little runt. Of all the Nick, totally obvious suggestions he made, the only right one he made was leaving me alone, the Ratsas bastard son of a medical officer. Mr. Data, set coordinates to Starlight One. Coordinates set, sir. Very good. Engage. Yes, sir. Oh, snap, you number one! <clears throat> Lieutenant Data, engage. Sorry, sir. Well, crew, here we go, off into the great unknown. Who knows what wonders await us? Who knows what fascinations are lying out there, anticipating our discovery? Lord, I was born for this. The raw, uninhibited thrill of adventure. Zounds, I feel alive, awake. I feel happy, I feel wonderful, I feel free. Oh, joyous life, I love thee now, with pure abundance. Captain, I feel a sense of joy. Yes, Counselor. At this very moment, I am the source of all joy. I feel happy. Happier than I have felt in a long time. Yes. You feel happy. Happier than you've felt in a long time. Yes, Counselor. I feel happy. So if you just... Yes, I'm sure of it now, Captain. You do feel happy, don't you? I can sense it. Yes, Counselor. I feel wonderful. Now, if you'll just run along... Wait. I don't know what it is. I'm sensing a small but growing feeling of uneasiness and restlessness. 
Are you certain you're okay, Captain? Perhaps it would be better if you talked about it. Dan Zooks, Counselor, must we go through this every time? Look, there's nothing ahead of us. I'm totally relaxed. Really, Counselor, I'm fine. And you're sure? Yes, Counselor, I'm sure. Now, I'm sure there must be someone on this ship who must actually need you, so... Okay, Captain. <sighs> Captain, you're hiding something. <sighs> you're uneasy. I can sense it. Counselor, I'm beginning to get very frustrated. It's frustration now. Everybody, something's wrong with the Captain. Shut up! The frustration is growing. Shut up! It's anger now. Deep, dark, seething anger. Shut up! Oh no, the, the captain's not to turn my Yeah! 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 There, there, Counselor, there! Yes, I was feeling very frustrated, but I'm all better now. <laughs> Number one. Yes, sir. Take the Counselor down to sick bay. Perhaps Dr. Crusher can revive her. Actually, sir, it might be easier if I took her down to my quarters. I can revive her there. As you wish. Yes. <sighs> Captain, is there a problem? Get up! Oh, it's you, Guinan. No, Guinan, there's no problem. Are you sure there's no problem, Jean-Luc? Yes, Guyan, I'm sure there is no problem. I just strangled my last problem into unconsciousness. I'm not talking about that problem. I'm talking about the other problem. Other problem? What other problem? The one Data's going to tell you about in a couple of seconds. Captain, there is a problem. My senses indicate a Romulan ship in the immediate vicinity, and it appears to be... Approaching. <sighs> I hear you, Data. Number one to the bridge. Lieutenant LaForge, run a complete physical breakdown of the ship's inverted power flex capacity and run a complete depth scan of the ship's weapon systems. Oh, and, uh, Jordy boy, it's two o'clock. Bring me my tea, will you? There's a good bell. I came as fast as I could. What seems to be the problem? Well, number one, it seems we're being pursued by a Romulan craft. I swear, the princess and I were just friends, and if the kid looks like me, it's only a coincidence. Number, 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 number one, number one, we settled all that last season, so spare me your cheap and transparent denials. Now we are being pursued by another Romulan craft, and we better come up with a course of action and fast. Lieutenant Wolf, any suggestions? Come! I feel we should open fire immediately and blow the f out of the sky. You know how I feel, Captain. It would be better to let the Romulans rip off our heads and sh** down our necks and die in battle with honor than to surrender in disgrace to a bunch of hairdressers. Mm. I take your meaning, Lieutenant. Any further preferences? Mm. Oh, yes, Captain. Before we enter this last and glorious battle, I would prefer one last meaningless overnight tryst with a large white woman. Ah, I take your meaning, Lieutenant. Yes, I'm sure I speak for everyone here when I say that we all miss the very special services of Lieutenant Tasha Yar. <sighs> <sighs> but we mustn't think of that now. For now we are in a jam uh, from which we must extricate ourselves from, which, Captain, the Romulan ship Problem is from. hailing us. Oh, that, that's very nice, Lieutenant. Be sure to send them my regards. Problem from? Captain, the beach. I believe they wish to speak with you. Oh, right, right, now, on screen, Data. Captain, I am not able to put the Romulan captain on screen at this time. Data, put the bloody Romans on the bloody screen. But, Captain, that is not possible. Now, Data! Captain, I am not able to put the Romulans on screen at this moment. Data, why can't you put the bloody Romulans on the bloody screen? Because you have the remote, sir. No, Data. Don't be ridiculous. I gave you the remote last time. <coughs> ah, Captain Picard of the Spaceship Enterprise. So nice that we meet again. Mm-hmm. Two o'clock. Okay. Your employees who serve in the National Guard and Reserve may seem different. They may work a little harder, be more confident, more willing to make the extra effort. 
to get the job done right. So when your employees need time off to serve, remember, it's not just good for our country, it's good for your business. Glad you could all make it. Deal? Now, dear friend, I wish to propose a barter that I'm sure you'll be quite interested in. I should hope so, McCruel. Uh, I hate to think that you came all this way for nothing. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, Captain, you have such a delightful sense of humor. Please let me know if you um, ever intend to use it. <laughs> Now, on to business, shall we? I understand that you have in your possession certain vital information concerning next month's space conference. Well, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Well, in any event, I have in my possession a certain friend of yours who had bet his precious little life that you do have that information. That is, if he had the choice to place that bet. Mitchell, what on earth are you talking about? Help me! Captain! My God, it's the boy, Leslie Crusher! <laughs> Red alert! So you see, Captain, the deal is simple. You give me the information, we give you the boy. We give you the information and you give us the boy? <laughs> 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 Bluffing? Mocking me with your laughter? Surely you must realize if you fail to deal with me, the boy will die! <laughs> <laughs> if the boy's so bloody fucking great, let him figure out his own way out of this fucking mess! <laughs> oh yeah! Commander! I know a way that we can destroy the Enterprise! Get away from me, kid, you bother me! No! But all we had to do. Silence! Can't you see you've outlived your usefulness? But all we had to do. Quiet! Hold this! Yes, I'm now a merry man. So, Mick Rule, now you understand. Apricard, once again I misjudged you. You have my sympathies. Mm. But wait, the deal is not over yet. Tell you what I'm gonna do. You give me the information, I'll give you the dead carcass of Wesley Crusher, plus your choice of either what's behind door number one, curtain number two, or whatever Jay has here in his little box. Come on down, Jay! Well, what shall it be, Captain? I don't know, McGruel. I'll throw in a dinette set, and your supply of tunnel locks, and a heap and helmet of rice and roni. The San Francisco treats! Uh, 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 hold on now, uh, McGruel. Uh, just a second. Uh, I I'm going alone. The box. Door. 
I'm keeping the information, Big Rule. No news. Oh, God, you don't know what you're saying. I'll give you a gift certificate from the oh, steel catalog. Take it off screen, bitch. I'm not going to fool the That's better. Everything is back to normal. Day time, resume course for Starlight 1. Ah, oh, well then. Everything's quiet. And I'm happy again. Ah, oh, Lord, I was born for this. The universe is my oyster. And there's nothing to stop me from slurping it down. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Captain, I'm sensing a feeling of joy. Welcome to How to Speak DQD. I will state a phrase, and at the tone, you'll repeat the phrase. Ready? Begin. Rama Atkins. Pete Bosniak. Tim Burke. Angela Cato. <laughs> James Dempsey Rich Frere Mike Goodwin Candesa Karch Joseph Knotts Sean Leahy Steve Mamlin Maggie McCann Steve Zach Zakian. Please practice these phrases frequently. They may or may not appear on the Blue Book exam at the end of the semester. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>